Hello and welcome to Talk Soup, a weekly podcast from Selma City Schools where you will hear information regarding our schools, the district, and the community at large. And now, our host, Dr. Avis Williams. Greetings, greetings, Selma community and Team Selma. Welcome to another episode of Talk Soup. I'm Dr. Avis Williams, Superintendent for Selma City Schools. And I'm Courtney Washington, Community Engagement Specialist for Selma City Schools. Today, we have an amazing show with some phenomenal guests with us, Um, and we are so super excited to learn more about what Selma City Schools is doing around teaching and learning. So why don't you guys share uh, your name and where you're working and what you're doing with teaching and learning. I am Alicia Johnson. I'm the reading specialist at Sophia P. Kingston Elementary School. Awesome. And I am Ms. Thrash. Instructional leader of Team D. Clark. All right, D. Clark. <laughs> and I'm Angie Thomas, reading specialist at Edgewood Elementary. Okay, wonderful. Yay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> well, we know that um, as educators, our core business is teaching and learning. Um, you know, of course, we've got to have that management piece. Uh, we want to make sure that we've got human resources where we're hiring and people want to get paid with payroll. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, we have to improve outcomes for our scholars through teaching right. and learning. And I first of all want to thank you guys for your work with that. Um, I know how, how consistent you all have been under the leadership of Ms. Ozella Ford, our phenomenal <laughs> executive director for teaching and learning, O Ford, as I like to call her. <laughs> She's out in the back uh, cheering us on right now, y'all. <laughs> but part of that work has been making sure we established a true instructional framework. So can you just tell us um, what that instructional framework is? I see them posted um, in classrooms. So what is the teaching and learning instructional framework for excellence? All right, well, we would like to see consistency of Mm -hmm. our practices Mm -hmm. across the district. Mm -hmm. So our district has our instructional framework that um, is a structure for achieving instructional excellence. For every every classroom. For every student, every classroom. Every, Every day. single day. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and I love that word consistency right. um, because I know sometimes when you go to school districts, you have practices that vary from building to building. And we want people to be creative, um, but in order for us to improve outcomes, would you guys say that consistency is an important part of that? Yes. Right. Yes. Because it's more so um, we want a blueprint for every teacher, mm-hmm. whether it be a novice teacher, mm-hmm. first year teacher, or an experienced teacher, and be able to implement evidence-based strategies that work across the board, whether it's elementary all the way up to Uh, high school. Absolutely, because good teaching is good teaching, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Even though there's a big difference between teaching a first Mm -hmm. grade class and a 10th grade English class, solid teaching practices can be seen either way. Right. right? Yeah. And that's what our instructional framework allows Mm -hmm. us to to do, right? Right. And if this is not um, just for any particular content, Mm -hmm. good teaching is good teaching. And some of the strategies that we use in elementary would definitely be beneficial in high school. Absolutely. So it's yeah. important for us to have a plan for mm-hmm. every teacher, right. every mm-hmm. student, every day. Absolutely. So, so one of the things that we do um, for every episode is we talk about our why. Um, and I know all of you have, each of you has a why for why you do the work that we do. But can you shed some light on the why behind an instructional framework? What's the why? Well, the why is to make sure that we have our students grow. Every single day. Gotcha. And so we start with the framework and we work from there. We work on our tiered instruction. Mm-hmm. We work on our um, differentiated instruction after that and looking mm-hmm. at our data from our formative assessment. Okay. And those are the big major area things that we need to work with, yeah. K through 12, pre-K yeah. through 12. Pre-K through 12, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because our goal is to have them to progress from one level to the next. And it doesn't matter where they start. Mm-hmm. The object is to get them, get them to proficiency, but we know that they have to grow in increments. Okay. It, it, it's kind of unreasonable to say that a student who is in quartile one based on performance series mm-hmm. to grow to quartile four, which is advanced level within a school year, but we definitely want to see them grow in every year, then work towards proficiency. Absolutely. And that instructional framework mm-hmm. aids us with that. And Absolutely. in order to do that, we have to make sure that we're providing a quality instruction for our students um, and that we are meeting each individual student where they are. Okay. Mm-hmm. That, that makes perfect sense. Yes. Equity, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're removing barriers for learning yes. and making sure every student has what the, the supports that they need. Um, and like we say, that all means all. Right. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, so, so tell me um, a little bit more about how the framework was developed, um, because it's, it's detailed, and I know um, our viewers can't necessarily see this in detail, mm -hmm. but um, if you visit any of our schools, right. you'll see posters of this, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's very detailed. So what, did, what was that development process like? There was a, a committee or a subcommittee of the teaching and learning community who looked at what would it take for a teacher to be effective. Mm -hmm. And we kind of looked at different models to come up with a model that would work for Selma City. Okay. We, a lot of times we get accused of taking things from somewhere else and trying to make it fit what we do. We don't want to do that. And we don't mm -hmm. want to do that. Yeah. So we want to take look at our students, mm -hmm. what would benefit our students. So we looked at multiple models to create Selma City's model. And in that model, we looked and we talk, talked about, okay, at the beginning of a lesson, what should an effective teacher do? Okay. And we came up with the plan. Gotcha. And to, and as the, it's really, let me go back, four E's. The four E's, the first E is to execute, and that E is to plan. Mm -hmm. What professional gotcha. development would you need mm -hmm. in order to be effective? Um, what resources would you need? So we went from planning, planning phase all the way down to what services would a student need in order to be successful, gotcha. and we just developed a plan. Okay, wonderful. And, it, and it's, it's very comprehensive, um, and I know it's not like a step-by-step, -step, like first I do no. this, and then I do that, and I finish up with equity, uh, but it, it all works together. Yes. Okay. One good thing about it is that the <laughs> district was involved, the teachers, everyone had good, a voice. Right. We compiled data from the teachers mm -hmm. and staff in our district, and we used that to identify those priorities awesome. for our mm -hmm. district. Yes, that's very good. Wow. Well, so have you guys in, in, enjoyed the, the sharing that you've done? Because I know one of, one of the things that you all do as part of the teaching and learning team is you work together as a team and then you turn that around. What's that been like for our um, reading coaches? I think it's very effective mm -hmm. because we get to learn from one another just like yeah, teachers I love do. that. Yeah. And we have our vertical planning and our um, just our different job alikes that are mm -hmm. coming up. Yeah. So we learn from each other, but we also are using that professional development piece to that. grow our knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Our we all have room to learn and grow, and I love the fact that we're networking and collaborating and learning from each other. I'm excited. Yes. I'm ready. You think I can use this to start teaching? Yes. 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 You can do it. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was designed to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Someone on the job the first day, yeah. and someone been on the job 30 years. There right. You go. It's, it's meant to be there. Go. Absolutely. This is excellent. Well, I'll be excellent. <laughs> I love it. The spirit of excellence. I love yes. that. Well, ladies, we thank you so much for sharing with us, and we'll be right back with more members of our teaching and learning team. Be right back. And welcome back to Talk Soup. We are going to continue our conversation with members of Team Selma's teaching and learning community. So, who do we have with us now? You guys want to introduce yourself? I'll start. I'm Crystal Dozier. I am the library media specialist at Edgewood Elementary School. And I am Tracy Parker, the Instructional Specialist at R.V. Hudson STEAM Academy. I'm Jason Moore for the Sixth Cross Board at Selma High School. Go Saints. Go Saints. I love it. All right. Well, welcome, guys. Thank you all for so, so much for sharing your time with us today. Um, we've had a great conversation thus far about uh, the Teaching and Learning Framework for Excellence, Instructional Framework for Excellence. So we got a little bit of information about how it was developed and the why behind it. Um, but I know it works um, in terms of all things teaching and learning, including um, the resources that we use, assessments that we use, and so forth, are kind of embedded in an instructional framework. Um, and I'm saying all of that because we have a segment called the Street Committee Said What? <laughs> yeah. So when I think about the instructional framework, I also, again, think about the resources that we use to support the, what we say um, excellence looks like. And um, one of those tools is edgenuity. Mm -hmm. um, and the street committee has put out there that, man, people hate edgenuity. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't personally heard this, and when I talk to our, our scholars in class, um, uh, I see some that love it, and, and like anything else, some that, that mm, I don't want to do this. You know, so you've you got to get a mixed bag. But what I really wanted you all to share with us is um, your take on edgenuity. Um, and, and what important role, if any, it plays in terms of our progress towards instructional excellence. Well, I can speak on that, Dr. Williams. Um, I worked with Ingenuity this summer, with mm -hmm. the summer school, and I had no negative comments from the community about it because mm -hmm. one convenience of Ingenuity was very convenient. 
So when students weren't able to complete their coursework within the school, mm -hmm. it was also to be able to go home and work right. on their mm -hmm. coursework. But also with ingenuity, we had also had face-to-face -face instruction there also. Yeah. Also in some city schools, we want to use whatever resources and tools that we can to meet the needs of the students, Absolutely. which ties back into our framework here. So ingenuity provides a pathway to meet students where they are, mm -hmm. which one of the ease of the framework is equity. Mm -hmm. right. So that's what we're doing. And we're mm -hmm. trying to tie that into our intervention piece too, because we want all students to achieve, what's the room looking for? Grow. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And also want to achieve proficiency. Yeah, and proficiency and, and growth. And it's really as well as a perfect tool to get that taken care of. Yeah, well, you know what? Drop the mic. You got this street committee. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, because what you said is so powerful, um, and the fact that we get that individual learning plan, right. um, and, and I love how you uh, wove equity in right. there too, mm -hmm. because you know when we say all means all, we can't have a cookie cutter approach. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have to literally make sure that we're meeting students where they are. Do you guys feel that ingenuity helps us do that? I feel that it does because we have been uh, doing ingenuity for two years now, mm -hmm. and. Of course, you know, you have to go through the um, professional development of ingenuity, mm -hmm. right. and then you also have to introduce it to our scholars and to the parents right. yes. to let them know how it works. And one thing that I like about um, ingenuity is that it is um, have our content standards gotcha. for Alabama embedded into the instruction. Mm -hmm. And the teachers can also customize lessons, mm -hmm. uh, whatever standard that they're teaching, they can mm -hmm. customize it for our scholars. Mm -hmm. And another thing uh, that's great about ingenuity is that when the students take the assessment of performance series on the Scantron, mm -hmm. it creates a My Path for them, gotcha. and which uh, goes back to their academic level for their reading and math. Okay. And with that being said, when that math path is embedded in ingenuity, the students are able to work on those uh, skills gotcha. that they may need. And ingenuity is broken up into four uh, subject, well, titles, uh, levels rather. And they have uh, like your foundational level. Mm -hmm. It has your basic, intermediate, and your advanced. So we wow. cannot forget about our advanced students too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what's not to like about that? Right. I mean, our students in elementary school are very transient in our district. Yes. So we have to provide consistency right. within our district. So ingenuity provides that consistency across the district if a student moves from right. one school to the other. Right. So they don't have to worry about being at the Clark and having one thing and then moving to Kingston or to mm -hmm. Payne and getting right. something else. Very okay. consistent. Awesome. And I love the convenience component of it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they can log on at home. Right. Um, you know, for our babies at, at the RB Hudson STEAM Academy, they have their one-to-one -one devices. Yeah, they have their one-to-one -one devices. And the parents, I love that our parents are getting more involved yeah. in this I've too. noticed that too. And they're calling in saying, okay, my student, my um, child needs their mm -hmm. number. What is it? Yeah. They're right. come in. And then they have also come in to me to even uh, go through like an in-service okay. so they can know how to log in I into ingenuity. That. So maybe that's something um, we could do with the parent university. Yeah. Um, just yeah. have a session for parents on how you engage um, uh, with your scholar uh, with ingenuity. Um, yeah. That might be something that you all can help us with. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So there you go, street committee. Um, you know, and there's no one size fits all. Right. Um, and one thing that we know in any organization, you're just not going to please everybody. And that's okay. Uh, but street committee, we still enjoy hearing from you. Um, and we appreciate the question. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk a little bit more about our instructional framework for excellence. So um, how will the instructional framework impact student achievement? Well, it's going to focus on, like I said, the four E's, okay. of how we're going to deliver our instruction to all of our scholars in our district. Mm -hmm. Because right now, we want everything, like the four E's says, we want to execute, engage, evaluate, and have that equity right. um, that's embedded in how we teach our scholars gotcha. in all of our schools. And like mm -hmm. you said before, we know that our scholars are transit. We want to make sure that we're doing everything we can at each school right. the same way. So all of that is embedded in the teaching and learning part. So what are the next steps? I'm sorry. What you oh, I was going to add to that. Now, <laughs> the framework also implements standards for the Alabama Quality Teacher Standards. Yes. And so here's some of the school what we're trying to do. Now, I ain't going to say what we're trying to do because before it may, may get me, but what we're, going <laughs> to, <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going to move our students toward proficiency. And yes. according to that, 
according to this framework, that'll help us all have some uniformity, if that's a word, consistency <laughs> all across the board and yep. moving our students to proficiency. And I love that the Alabama quality teaching standards are literally embedded in the framework. I mean, they're right here. Um, so that if a teacher was, um, you know, wanting a little bit more information, they could go back and check out those AQTSs and find out even more about um, the framework. So that's that's a great reference. Yeah, and we have everything correlated to everything that we need this, mm -hmm. uh, for the Alabama standards. And speaking to the next steps, we have to go back and unpack each E at our respective schools. So okay. at every PLC, one of those E's is covered. Well, just execute one week, engage the next week, evaluate the next week, and equity. So we it. make sure that at every school that's done throughout PLC. Wow. So, so we really are getting um, instructional excellence um, from one classroom to the next, school from one school, school to the next, mm -hmm. grade level to the next, content area to yes. the next. That is awesome. Um, this, this definitely um, is, is working. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's evidence that the work that this team has done is, is moving us in the right direction. Um, I know we have pushed out our report card data, yes. uh, which we are super excited about. Um, I encourage the community to come out on November 12th um, at our uh, regular school board meeting. I'm going to do our uh, annual State of the Schools address um, at that board meeting and really share the highlights of the work that you all have done with teaching and learning along with the results that we've gotten um, as, it, as it relates to that. Um, and we're super excited. You know, we're moving in the right direction, um, knowing that we've got, we've got work to do. You know, we've, we've got plenty of work to do. Um, but I appreciate the commitment that you all have um, and, and thank Ms. Ford for her leadership with this team. Yes, um, she has been very instrumental in that part. And awesome. we appreciate that. And it's a learning environment for us all. Yes. We learn from each other. Right. We're able to. Yeah. And I love hearing that. You know, it's the <laughs> second time we've heard that in this discussion about the learning from each right. other. That's, that's powerful. I mean, that's how we get that collective efficacy where we support each other, we've got each other's back, and we're learning together. Right. Yeah. Hey. So is it my turn yet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, uh, thank you all for being our guests for this week. And, um, and for our announcements, uh, our teaching and learning department is launching a mobile self-care unit. Oh, yes. And so um, we are looking for sponsors to help uh, provide uh, different materials for the mobile self-care, lawn chairs. Um, help me out here. Ice cream? Ice cream? Yes? We all scream for ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just thought I would throw that out there. <laughs> and anything to help, um, help with, uh, to de-stress and for our teachers to stay motivated throughout the year. So okay. um, our community partners, um, those that are with us now or that will be joining us in the future, you will be hearing from me about our mobile self-care unit. Mm -hmm. Um, for our partner highlight, I still want to highlight uh, the Good News Club and yes. to tell them thank you for um, your continued work and support with Selma City Schools, especially with our elementary scholars. And also for the Selma chapter of Lynx for their work at R.B. Hudson Steam oh Academy. Right. Yes. Yes. I was at the auditions uh, last week for the Lion King Jr. Oh my God, our scholars are so Into amazing. It. And I cannot wait <laughs> for the production of The Lion King Jr. this spring. Um, it was it was just overwhelming. Um, you know, like my allergies started acting up because my eyes were like watering and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, our scholars are just so talented, are, you know. And so we definitely appreciate the um, Selma chapter right. of the Lynx for their mm -hmm. support. Um, and particularly our board member, Danielle Wooten, right. who yes. was very instrumental in writing that Disney yes. Junior Grant, yes. which is, is the, the support right. that helps us launch the work right. that we're doing it's around It's providing that. all of the materials, yes. uh, the background music, the choreography. Yes. Um, it's helping with set design. So yes. it's coming with uh, all the materials, basically, that yeah. they need for the production. Absolutely. So this is wonderful. Yeah. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what we have now. Uh, we are into basketball season with oh athletics. So um, our Hudson, as well as our uh, uh, Selma High Saints, will be starting mm -hmm. soon. Hudson are has yes. already started. Last night. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, the dogs. Mm -hmm. and the football is in the playoffs. Go Selma ahead and High School. We got our first. <laughs> we got the playoffs. We got our game this Friday yes. in Newtown. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, we want to make sure that, that that's uh, pushed out there. Um, another thing that started, speaking of sports, is eSports. Um, and at some point in the coming weeks, um, I want to hear from Coach Lane and members of the eSports team. I invited them to come to our December board meeting. Because oh, um, I know their season started a week or two ago. Um, and it's a learning curve for, for us because it's new. Um, but that's an exciting for us. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, because we're not gamers. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. But just exciting stuff, exciting stuff. Um, any other announcements or shout-outs? Oh, we are still on social media, Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. You can also catch uh, Talk Soup on our YouTube channel, so follow us, like us, subscribe. Very good, and um, and definitely uh, give us your feedback uh, because we do want to make sure that as we, we move together as a team right. and that we're staying true to our theme, one, one team, team, one voice, voice committed, committed to excellence. excellence. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's what we do with Team Selma, um, and you all are a part of the team, and we appreciate you supporting Team Selma as we move forward. Um, that's a wrap for today. Uh, thank you so much to all of our guests from the teaching and learning team. Uh, thank you so much for your commitment to excellence and the work that you're doing at your individual schools. Uh, big shout out to Miss Ford for her leadership with this. Yay. And that's a wrap. We will see you all next week on Talk Soup. Thanks so much. Bye.